Hey guys, I'm Ryan here from Liquid Concepts. So today for the weekly tips and tricks videos, uh, we're going to do a little bit on color fill and doing two-tone colors on objects. So in this case, you can kind of see we've already got a little bit of our prep work started here and uh, we've got a black wheel that a customer has and uh, we've already painted the wheel and now we're going to go in and do some, uh, they're like a teal metallic accents and so uh, it's gonna look really sweet uh, we're gonna do a color fill with uh, this is a uh, Lexani wheel so we're actually gonna do a sweet little color fill in here just to kind of showcase the name of it and then of course we're gonna do just these spokes like what you see right here and uh, it's gonna look really awesome so um, just to kind of give you a little bit of a background of what all we've done so far uh, so that way to bring you up to speed on what we're about to do so first thing is, is we have painted the entire wheel black, all right? So we painted everything black and we clear coated it. So that's one big thing to remember. We went ahead and painted it black, we clear coated it, and then we went back and we scuffed everything up with a red scotch Bright pad. You can use a red, you can use a gray, but you wanna get something to scuff it up. You can also use sandpaper if you want. Uh, because this wheel, you can't see it right now, but once we peel all the tape off, you'll be able to see it better. Uh, because this wheel has a lot of intricate pieces, the scotch Bright did really well because we was able to get in all those corners and grooves and it gave us a good bite. And so, uh, pretty much, the reason why we did that was was because if we go ahead and in some cases in paint you can lay down one piece of paint or one layer of paint and then tape over it lay down another layer and then do intricate work and normally everything is good every now and then you have a problem where if you lay this down you peel your tape up your paint actually comes back off with the tape so not something you really want to do um, another thing is is that uh, we're going to go ahead and, um, like I said, we're going to do all of this. We're going to paint all of this in the teal metallic and also in these letters. And so the reason that we went ahead and clear coated it was because whenever we're doing a color fill like this right here, it actually makes it really simple, really easy. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. So we're going to go ahead and do the teal on all of these spokes that we've got all right here and also spray a small little color fill in here. And so by having this already clear coated, we can actually come back in and take and wipe it off with like some acetone or isopropyl alcohol, something a little bit lighter. We don't want some lacquer thinner because we don't want to mess up the clear or anything like that. But we can come back in and wipe this off just like that and then it actually makes it to where it stays in the recessed areas right in here, but yet it will go off of the areas that we've already clear coated. And so the other thing is, is that you want to make sure that, like I was saying before, we've already scuffed this entire wheel. So which means that whenever we lay down a whole layer of clear over the whole thing, everything is ready to go. Everything's already been scuffed. It's ready to have another coat of clear coat laid on top of it. And now we're going to be ready to go. So um, we've got these right here. We also have some wheel inserts. I'll show you those in a few minutes. And um, I think you're really going to be, uh, be impressed on how simple some of the color fills can be. You just need to think about it ahead of time on which way that you need to spray what colors on what. And uh, you can get a really unique look. And instead of trying to tape off all of that, that would be insane to do. Versus we can come back in the way that we've done it right here, spray it, let it dry, wipe it off, we're done. And so it uh, makes it really easy, makes a great looking product. And in this case, we've just used our fine line. We've taped off all the edges that we need on these pieces right here. And so uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're going to grab our teal, uh, get it mixed up, go ahead and spray these little bitty areas, let it dry, and uh, we'll come back. We'll uh, do the color fill on this and uh, hope you guys are gonna enjoy it. So we'll get it started. You've already saw what we're going to be doing with all of our wheels and everything. So this is kind of what our process started like before we got all this taped up and before we got everything ready to go. So we've already painted these center caps and they're already recessed. We've already clear coated 
everything on these. So we've got a black center cap that's fully clear coated. Now it's ready to be scuffed. And so again, it's going to start out just like that. We're going to take a red or a gray scotch bright. We're going to just kind of scuff this up just so that our clear and our paint will be able to bond back into it. And then we're going to do a color fill, the same color as what our teal metallic is in all of these areas. And we're going to do a nice little color fill all in there. Since it's already clear coated, that's the thing to remember. Since it's already clear coated, it's already being protected from the elements, from things like that. So now I can go spray my teal all the way across the entire part, come back with acetone or, you know, like I said, even the isopropyl alcohol and just very gently start wiping it away. The clear coat will protect it. And then what's on top of this smooth surface, I'll be able to wipe off and then what's down inside the recessed areas will stay inside of there because my rag is not going to go down inside those areas. It's just going to wipe it straight across the top of it. Again, we're not going to put a lot of pressure on it. We don't want to sit there and rub it because we don't want to mess up the clear, but that's how it's going to work. So I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. Uh, it, it comes out looking awesome and it looks totally custom and it's a simple and easy way to get a, a nice color feel on something that has a good recess. Now that's one thing to remember. If it has a very, very tiny recess, you may not be able to do it. You might have to look at different ways or um, it may not be possible with this method. But whenever you have a color feel and you have a pretty good deep area like what we've got right here, this is the way that it's going to work the best and definitely the quickest because as you can tell, taping off something like that, it's not even worth it. You can also get a brush and you can try to brush that in, but inevitably you're going to get it somewhere off of that and then you're back to wiping it down. And this method for us, we found, has been a lot easier and a lot quicker. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to get these scuffed, get them back to this portion right here where they're already scuffed and they're ready to go and then we're going to shoot the shoot the teal whenever we're shooting this we'll go ahead and shoot that and then get it going so stay tuned and uh, you'll see what happens start unmasking everything that we just done already for all the taping and everything like that. I know it was short-lived, uh, a lot of work for just all these little bitty areas, but whenever it's custom, that's what custom is, is doing the work, getting it done, making it look the best that it can. All right, so 
all we're going to do now is we can start and uh, start pulling off our tape and start revealing our lines. And so again, we just want to be careful and just start peeling this off one by one. And then essentially, we're just going to peel all of this tape off and then get ready to go with the, uh, with the color fill down here. Now these are already done, so after we pull all of our tape off and our fine line, everything's done with that. And then we're gonna go ahead and I'll show you some color fill in here, show you what we're gonna do. And then also we've got our color fill that we've got on the center caps, and so you'll be able to see that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and get all these unmasked and uh, get started with it, so stay tuned. So now we've got one of our wheels completely taken apart. Um, we've got all of the tape off of it. We've got our parts right here. We've got all of our spokes. The wheel came out really awesome. I'm really happy with it. Uh, we've got a few minor little touch-ups, but again, um, it's going to be very easy to fix. So um, what we've got here now is, as you can see, where we've got everything taped off, where it says Lexani right here, and so we've got fresh paint right in here. Now we did come back in beforehand and spray a little bit of black, so if we do get a little bit of black off of the uh, the rag that we're gonna wipe it off with, not a big deal. Um, everything is still gonna be black all the way around it. And so, um, what we're gonna do here now is, is we're just gonna get either acetone, isopropyl alcohol, something like that. Because remember, it's already clear coated underneath it. So, whenever we go to wipe it off, we're gonna wipe that top layer off, which is gonna be the paint, but that clear that's right underneath that paint, it's going to prevent it from taking any of the black off of it. So that's how we can do the color fill and make it work really well. So uh, normally we like to use something a little bit less aggressive than like lacquer thinner or something like that. Uh, acetone works good. Isopropyl alcohol will work normally even better because it is a little bit less harsh. Um, it will take a little bit more to kind of rub it just a little bit to get it to come off but it'll also be a lot easier uh, in the long run. So that's kind of what we're gonna do. So we've already got some isopropyl alcohol in this pump action spray bottle here. And so what we're gonna do is, is we're just gonna take this, we're gonna put it out over here because we don't wanna put it on the fresh paint. And so we're just essentially just going to wet the rag just like that. And we're just gonna just slightly cover it just like that so we have it with our finger. And then we're gonna come in here and then we're going to slowly start to wipe away the paint and so it'll take a little bit but you can kind of see how now you can start to see some of that some of that paint is going away but what's recessed inside the LEX and all of that it's all it's all staying in there and so again I'm lightly wiping because I just want to wipe that top surface off alright and so I don't want to get too far in there because if I do then of course it's going to take the take some of the color out of it I don't want that and so we're just going to come in and like I said just lightly just start wiping away all of this in here and again make sure to keep changing your rag over and over again because you want to make sure that whenever you're wiping that you're wiping it with a clean surface all the way through and so you may go through two three four rags not a big deal but you just want to keep getting and you can see how we're getting all of that all of that off on our rag and we're slowly switching it from a new place each time that we kind of wipe just a small section off and so again we're going to take that wipe it off switch to a new section wipe this off again just like that and so again it's gonna take a little bit of time but all in all once we're done we're gonna have essentially everything wiped out of that to where pretty much we just have the black lettering all the way around it and then we have the Lexani all outlined in the same green that we had in that so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna finish this one finish all the rest of them and then get started so I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Um, we're going to go ahead 
and like I said, we're going to get everything all together. We'll give you some shots of that, and uh, we'll also go ahead and do the um, the center caps as well. Show you those. Those are going to look sweet as well. So stay tuned and keep watching. All right. So now that we've got all of these all painted, uh, they're ready to go. Uh, we can now go ahead and get started with uh, doing just the, the wiping it off. And so again, we've already clear coated these, we've already scuffed them, and now we're going to go back in and because these are already filled in, we're just going to take this to the isopropyl alcohol very lightly and we're just going to rub across it, flip our rag over, rub it across it again, and just keep moving to a new piece of the rag so that way we don't get any of the, the paint that we're pulling off of it to smear across it and so it just keeps wiping it up. So we'll go ahead and just spray that you don't need a lot just a little bit and then we want to just get a flat surface with the rag like that and then we're just going to start just gliding across it just like that now you may not see results right at first but you can already see that we're starting to get some of that off so again we're just going to lightly spray that just enough to kind of get it wet and then we're going to come back and start rubbing it again. Now again, I'm just running it over it fairly quickly because I just want to be able to just glide across it. And so what that's going to do is it's going to pretty much just take off that top layer. And so again, you can see how I'm just barely moving that across it, but yet my black is starting to show through. And so the more and more that I rub across this, then the more that I'm taking that paint off of there, which is what I want to do. And so again, it's going to take a little bit. It's not going to happen just in one pass, but we want to just be very careful with it and just keep rubbing it. Just light pressure. You don't need to push it very hard. And uh, you can start to see a dramatic difference in how everything's looking. And so again, you can already see a big difference. So from what we've already taken off to what it looks like right here. So again, we're just going to take this and keep rubbing all the way around. Now, one thing to remember is, is that you've got to make sure on these, on these parts like this that your clear coat is fully cured out. So you want to make sure that you probably leave it on there. If it's like a standard clear that takes uh, 12 to 24 hours to cure out, 8 hours, you want to definitely leave it overnight or something like that. So then that way you make sure that you don't have fresh clear and then whenever you go to start wiping it, the clear actually doesn't um, it, it doesn't protect it and so you'll actually start softening your clear coat and then that's not good because then whenever you go and you start rubbing it that softened clear will start to come off and then you're going to have more problems so again we've already let these set and we've already let them cure out for the time that it was needed um, so now as you can see it's slowly starting to come out the way that we are wanting it. So we of course wanted a black black surface with the the teal metallic color feel and so it's starting to really come together really good. Uh, I'm going to kind of fix a little bit of these lines over in here. Now again I'm not pressing hard because I don't want to soften that clear and, and really rub it or anything like that but you can really see a big difference in how this is coming out. So we'll kind of get in those in the in the C and the S right there. And again, I'm always uh, constantly flipping my rag because I don't want any of this to go back onto that. So I'm constantly flipping it. And so now I'm just going to come back in and just slowly start wiping everything away. And I think it's starting to look really good now. So. Um, looks like that is about all that we need. We'll kind of hit some of this off the side. Uh, we didn't get much on the side because whenever we were spraying it, we were spraying it straight across, straight down to it, perpendicular. So it looks like everything turned out really well on this. So again, you can see all of our scuff marks. That's perfectly fine. Whenever we go back over and clear coat it, all that will go away. Not a big deal, but I really think for, uh, for what you're getting out of that, didn't take a lot of time, but it made a world of difference in how it looks and um, what all you can do with a simple color feel if you know how to do it correctly. So um, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get to get the rest of these all finished up. We're gonna get all the wheels all finished up 
and uh, we'll show you a couple of shots of those and then uh, we're going to go ahead and clear coat these and I think you guys are really going to like it. So um, one thing is I'll kind of go over as well. We're going to actually uh, do some video on clear coating these wheels because there are there is a lot of little intricate pieces all inside these wheels. Uh, you can have a lot of runs if you're not careful. So um, I'll kind of go over a little bit on painting a wheel like this and uh, that way uh, you can see we're actually going to paint it inside and out and we're going to do it all in one shot. So um, stay tuned. I know you guys are going to enjoy this so um, keep watching and uh, we'll get started. So now that we've got everything done, we've got all of our color fill down in here on the Lexani. We've got all of this taped up and then sprayed. Everything looks great. Um, now we're pretty much ready to go in and start our clear coat. So um, what we're going to do here is we've already blown all these off. Of course, whenever we bring them out, uh, we're working with them. We got paper around it. You know, there's there's going to be dust. There's going to be things like that that's going to get on it. So. We want to make sure that especially whenever we're shooting our clear, especially over black, black's going to show everything. We want to make sure that we have a good, clean, smooth finish. And so um, we've already came in, we've got these hung back up, we've already sprayed them all with, um, with air and got most everything off, but now we're going to go back through and actually tack everything down. And so uh, all we're going to do is we're just going to grab our tack rag um, and then we're just going to just lightly just kind of go over all of this area just every bit of it as much as we can so then that way any dust or lint or anything like that that may have actually gotten on the part and didn't get blown off whenever we had the the high pressure air hose blowing it all off that tack rag should hopefully pick it up and then that way we have an all black wheel with some really nice teal metallic accents and uh, of course our color fill down here. So um, we're going to go ahead, we're going to finish tacking every one of these off and then we're going to get our clear coat, uh, spray the clear. I'll show you guys a few things about it, especially whenever you're doing it overall on the entire wheel and uh, go from there with it. So um, we're going to go ahead, we're going to mix up the clear. Uh, the clear that we're going to shoot is actually going to be our um, liquid concepts clear. It's the uh, the high solids glamour clear that we have and so uh, really great clear to use if you're doing wheels or really just any project. So uh, it's a great it's a great application for the wheels like this and doing a good overall and I think you're really going to see uh, some really excellent shine out of it whenever we get finished with it. So um, stay tuned. We're going to go ahead and get everything tacked off, mixed up, and then we'll be back here shortly. Alright, so we're back. We've got everything tacked off. We've got everything ready to go. Now let's talk a little bit about how we're actually going to spray these wheels. And so I, at first I told you that we were going to talk a little bit about this. And I want to go over a little bit with it because I feel like it helps a lot knowing how to approach a project like this and especially in going with the clear because of course you don't want runs everywhere. You want to make sure that you lay it on, you get it nice and wet, but you don't get it too wet to where it's going to run. So uh, there's a couple of things that we're going to do. First thing is, is that um, we've got our clear already mixed up and you can see we've got a bigger container. And so whenever we have this thing stuck on here like that, it makes our overall paint gun, even though this is a spot repair gun, it makes it bigger. And so that's one thing to remember, especially whenever you're trying to get in these tight areas and corners, sometimes if this thing is in here, it can possibly hit that, all right? So we got to kind of know how we're going to approach that. And then the other thing is, is that um, also it really helps out on knowing which clear that you're going to use and getting used to it, all right? So in this case, like I said before, we're going to be using our liquid concepts uh, the high solids glamour clear and so what we've done is we've mixed this up two to one to a half 
And so uh, we've got two parts of the clear, we've got one part of our activator, and then we've got a half part of reducer. And so um, by putting that half part in there, it, it thins it out just a little bit because it is a thicker clear, it's a high solids clear. And so by, by thinning it out like that, it's still able to be able to be sprayed on and then it stays right where it's at. Now again, if you spray it heavy enough, sure, it's gonna run. There's no question about it. Um, but it's not gonna be like a really cheap clear where you spray it on and it's like you just barely get it just a little bit over wet and it just starts running, all right? And so that's the nice thing about using a high solids clear like the one that we have here. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put this on and I'm going to go over a few of the motions of what I'm actually going to be uh, spraying so then that way I know whenever I'm actually spraying this I know which way I need to point the paint gun and everything. So whenever we have this on here, actually I'll take this back off right quick, whenever we have this on here um, I'm going to first actually take, and I'm gonna turn my fan down, all right? And so whenever I turn my fan down, then what's gonna happen is, is my fan is going to go from wide open to down a little bit smaller. I'm not gonna to go to a full dot because the gun will do that, but I'm just wanting to put a fan about that big, all right? And so just something like that. I don't want a full size fan, but just something somewhere around in about this area right here. And so what that's gonna do is, is that's gonna help me get in all of these areas just like this. And so we'll go ahead and set that right there hopefully they don't fall. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and then whenever I spray this, I'm actually gonna focus more on these areas up in here than I am overall. And so what that's gonna do is, is I'm gonna take this and I'm going to spray it just like that and then like this and then come back in here and then I might turn and I might kind of go like this. And so essentially I'm getting it wet all the way down here, all the way up here, across, and then getting it wet all in here. Now whatever overspray that I get on my clear, going from here onto here, and then whenever I spray this part onto here, that's perfectly fine because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and hit it all the way around each one of these just like this. Now yeah, it's gonna be time consuming, but in the end, it's gonna be a better finish. And then whenever I'm done with that, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna either do an overall like that or as I'm going, depending on just how I feel and what I feel comfortable in, I can go back and after, let's say that I finish this square and I start on this one, I can go ahead and do this one, this one leg right here. So all of this is done and then do this square and then do this leg and then do this little portion right here and then do that leg. So then that way everything stays wet and uniform all the way around. Then whenever I'm done with all of these spokes, come back in, hit right in here and then now all of this is finished. So the other thing you got to think of is, is we're doing an overall, which means we got to do the back side back here and we got to do the front side up here. So the one thing that you want to make sure of is, is this is the spot that everybody sees. This is the this is the showpiece right here that we've done. All right. So whenever we're actually clear coating a full wheel like this, and even when painting, you definitely want to do this. You actually want to start from the back, back here, and start spraying it all the way around. And so what happens is, is that whenever you're spraying it, all of the overspray will come back into this area right here. Perfectly fine, because then you're gonna spray all this back area, get it all wet, and then get a nice even coat all the way around it, and then you're gonna come back in and then start your overall on the front of it. And so the reason that you wanna do that is because this is the part that everybody is going to see 100%, so you wanna make sure that this looks the best. And so if you get any little bit of overspray that is back in this area in the back over here, not a big deal because there's going to be a big old wheel hub that's sitting right here and then it's all going to be tucked inside the car. So essentially you're not going to see that little bit of overspray that might be just like right here that's just slightly, slightly less glossy than what this outer portion is. Nobody's ever going to care about that. The other thing is that if you're spraying it fast enough, and you don't have to be in a hurry, but if you spray it fast enough, all of this right here is still going to be wet 
by the time that you move into this area right here. So as you spray this and you have overspray hitting this lip in the back side, back in here, what's going to happen is whenever it hits on this area inside, then it's actually going to melt back into the clear and everything will still glass out and be completely smooth. So um, just to kind of give you a quick little rundown, first thing is we're going to come back in, we're going to hit all inside here. Now again, I'm actually still going to have my smaller fan because what's happening is, is that I can get this gun in here very easily. But if you remember, I've got this big old uh, cuff that it's not going to allow me to get up to right here. So I'm only going to be stuck right around this middle section. So I'm literally having to take it and either paint it like this, which you can definitely do, not a problem, or sometimes I've even taken it and went like this. And so I just pretty much just make it in one motion just like this. So I pivot right in the middle, but I paint it. And so I start out from the middle, from the inside of it in here, and then just start doing like this all the way out and then all the way like this and then all the way like that. Now the one good thing is that I'm using the PPS cup. So whenever I do go up like this, I don't lose all of my fluid that's in there. So I'm still able to actually paint up inside here and clear coat up inside there and still get a good wet coat, all right? And so then once we get all of that done, then we're gonna come in here, we're gonna keep our same smaller fan and start doing all these little areas like that. And so I know that's a lot to take in. It's a lot to kind of explain and everything on a wheel set like this, but um, once you see it in action, it'll all make sense and everything will, will just pretty much just flow out really nice and really smooth. So uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get the booth on, get our masks on, uh, get the, uh, the clear on the gun and uh, get started. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this and uh, we'll definitely get some shots of going all the way around everything so that way you can see exactly what we're doing, how it's all glassing out and how everything's coming out looking good. All right, so let's get started.
just got everything all finished up. We got everything all clear coated. Uh, everything has sat for probably about 20, 30 minutes or so. Uh, and then we went ahead and we baked these. So uh, our clear is actually a baking clear. Uh, we let the booth run for about an hour and a half or so. Uh, baked them. Ours runs at about, I want to say, like 140 or so. Uh, you can bake them at different temperatures to kind of speed up the clearing process. And so uh, we went ahead, we baked these just to kind of get them done a little bit quicker so we can get them in and out of the booth a lot faster. So um, as you can tell, uh, these things came out super awesome. I mean, everything looks really great on it. We got really good um, gloss all in, all of this everywhere. Um, even inside these edges, which is really what we were mainly focusing on. And uh, you can definitely tell a big difference in the way that it looks. And so, um, you know, I hope you guys have really enjoyed this. I know we always do, making the videos, showing you guys things, and hopefully helping you out and getting you to, you know, get up to that next level. You know, um, so. Um, if you have any questions, definitely comment below. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, any other you know, videos you'd like to see, anything like that, um, let us know and we'll definitely try to shoot one and make it happen for you. So um, again, this for this series right here, we got a color feel and uh, I just, I, I really like these wheels. They came out awesome. I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited about it. So I'm Brian from Liquid Concepts and we're making Hydrographics great again.